All right, so if everyone can still hear me, we'll go ahead and, uh, and get started. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you very, very much for being here with us. Um, totally realizing, just like ourselves, the speakers here, uh, you had to rationalize lunch with this session, uh, and then you had to find this room, which is kind of out of the way, in a way. So thank you for being here. Uh, if you are here for an adoption session on Office 365, you're good. If you're here for advanced features in uh, ATP for Windows, that's in a different room. So just making sure everyone here is for, for the right uh, topic. And we have kind of a, a lot of content to cover. If you read the abstract, hopefully you noted that this is going to be more of kind of an orientation session. And I'm going to start dive right into it. And I'll introduce my co-speakers uh, in a few minutes. It's great to see everyone here. Um, you know, some of us have been kind of focused on the adoption topic for a while now. And I can tell you 18 months ago, the last Ignite, uh, this kind of session would get, I think, 15, 20 people of those ahead of the curve kind of enthusiasts. And it's just great to see so many people interested in, in this topic and how do we get value of, out of Office 365 and everyone kind of help in their organizations to business users and end users doing it um, at scale. Matt, who's going to come here uh, at some point in the session, had come from Yammer originally into Microsoft. I was on the SharePoint team when we made the acquisition. And when we used to pitch kind of the SharePoint Yammer story, we used to talk about, hey, the world is changing. And you have to get better at adjusting to your circumstance. Being at this conference for about a few days now, I think it's pretty clear that especially when you talk about moving to the cloud, we can confidently say that the world has already changed. The cloud is here. Many of you are either thinking about moving to Office 365 in the cloud. Some of you are in the middle of migration. Some of you are already thinking about the next steps and driving again end, end user adoption at scale. But I think the world around us has already changed in this respect. One of the people who kind of talked about changing environments in the business um, culture and the corporate companies was Jack Welsh. And have, how many of you have kind of seen this quote before? Wow, that's lower than I thought. Uh, so if you kind of read this quote, it's as if Jack Welsh talked about this at Ignite 2016. But actually, if you know this quote, you might know the origin of it. And that's the annual report of GE covering the year of 1999. And if you read the quote and the full kind of um, content from GE at the time, it reads as follows, and I'm kind of summarizing and paraphrasing. Jack Wells to talk about how do we drive growth in GE through innovation. He talked about how do we transform GE into a digital company powered by learning, empowering people at GE to drive the change? Would someone argue that that is not 2016? And GE today is one of the biggest companies we work with on the fast track side to drive the move to the cloud and the transformation uh, of their company from a cultural perspective. So I would say the world has changed already. It's upon us, and I think many of you are here because you're thinking about how do I actually help the company make the most out of my technology? In this case, technology at point is Office 365. And how do I make sure that as an IT organization, I spend more and more of my time thinking about how the environment is changing, what are the business objectives that are kind of aligned with my business strategy, and are a derivative of how I need to deal with change in my changing environment? And how do I help my business users really utilize this technology in a way that will help them kind of address the daily business tasks that they need to do? Um, and that's kind of one aspect of how IT is, is transforming um, when we kind of meet at Ignite this year. So today, we want to focus on something that Jack Welsh actually talked about in that 1999 report, which is how do we help transformation through learning, and how do we empower our business users to adjust the business tasks that they have at hand? With me today um, is Matt Ontel. Matt, like I mentioned briefly, had come from uh, Yammer. And we learned, as an office business, we learned a ton from Yammer, 
who, those of you who are familiar with Yammer pre-acquisition, was essentially an adoption-first business model. Um, I was, like I mentioned again, uh, my name is Gideon. I work in the Office 365 business group. Um, I was on the SharePoint side when we made the acquisition. And Matt and I together have a lot of experiences with customers, partners, uh, and within Microsoft, of course, of kind of moving through this transformation, both for our customers and for ourselves. And then we're lucky to have Sharon Liu, who's um, working with me in the Office 365 business group. And Sharon is going to show you some of the resources that we have online available today. Because what happens is a lot of customers focus on deployment. And we obviously have a an, phenomenal investment in Fast Track to help you do that. But then when they start thinking about how do I do this, how do I drive change at scale, and how do I help business users at scale, they kind of feel a little bit alone, to be honest. And one of our objectives for the session is to show you you're not alone. And your zero adoption is designed into Fast Track as a customer success service. And we have rich materials and resources to help you go through that planning and the execution stage of that. OK? So like we said, a little bit of a fast-paced session, um, content that we want to orient you with. So then you can go back home and then remember, man, I remember Matt and Sharon and Gideon showed me this, and you'll know where to go um, to look for it and find it. All right? Um, we will work really hard to leave time for Q&A. There are mics here. And uh, hopefully, we have enough time for, for all of you to kind of ask us questions as well. How many of you have gone to the customer panel we just had 30 minutes ago? Just a few of you. All right. So um, we had a, a great customer panel. Uh, if you were there, hopefully you appreciated the, the customers being unfiltered about the successes, but also the challenges and what we call there the bumps of moving to Office 365. And one of them was Mott McDonald. Mott McDonald, um, again, like Simon from Mott McDonald said, not the double golden arch company, but a very large engineering project management and consulting company um, that they do uh, projects like the tunnel that connects France to England. Uh, they operate in 150 countries. And they are moving and have moved essentially already to the kind of full-fledged features of, of Office 365 uh, beyond email also to uh, files with OneDrive and so forth. And when you talk about things that are core to planning and being successful and moving to Office 365 and driving the business value, you will see us in the session talk about things like vision, challenges, stakeholders. And it's interesting, Mark McDonald, going back to kind of talking about the changing environment, the business need to move to the cloud was not a technological need. It came from their environment, which was shared by many of us, meaning specifically that in 2008, the economic crisis essentially forced them to rethink their cost structures. And they essentially said, hey, we have to reinvent the way we manage engineering projects around the world. We have to reinvent the way we enable our teams, our engineers, to collaborate together whether it's an engineering working on the next phase of the Panama Canal with an engineer that is working again on the tunnel connecting France and England. And what you'll see kind of from that story, and Simon has uh, a deep dive session on the Mott McDonald uh, story, I think, today or tomorrow. Um, one of the things they focused on early on was the vision. And the Mott, the Mott McDonald vision, which I think I have on a later slide, um, really speaks to the fact that you have to think about your business goal. And I'm going to go back to that later on. But that's something that sounds simple. And like many of the things that we're going to talk about today, it sounds simple, but it's really, really not easy. So you'll see what I mean when, when we get there. Um, another thing that happens, and, and Simon and I just chatted about this earlier today, um, is the IT team. We talked about kind of IT moving to becoming a business enabler and thinking about end user adoption and value. Uh, it's interesting to note, just as an anecdote, uh, Simon's manager, when they kicked off the project, was the IT director for the company. Uh, now his manager, is, their title is business transformation, the director of business transformation. And you can see that with customers who are successful with kind of reinventing what the company needs to do through technology. They reinvent the purpose and the objective of IT. And you can see people. Also good to see on a personal level people moving up the scale and getting literally promoted after these projects. But really the company, it's a reflection of the company kind of 
different perception about the role of IT. Because if, if I'm now presented to the company as the director of business transformation, uh, it's a different message than if I'm presented as the director of IT. And the expectations from the organization to me, if I'm that person, are uh, fundamentally different. So when we looked at kind of our customer base, and if you've gone to any of our fast related sessions, you've heard more than a couple times that we essentially engage with four to 5,000 new customers every month. And by customers, I don't mean people, I mean organizations. And that's becoming uh, an incredible wealth of insights, feedback, pushback, and learning uh, for us that we then want to go back and, and share with you guys. So this is one example of a research we did. Uh, we essentially looked at companies that within three months or 90 days achieved high level of usage, not only on Exchange Online, but also across different workloads. And we asked ourselves, what are the attributes that are common to these customers? And what you can see here, we, we looked at uh, roughly 20 different activities that customers invest in um, when they think about and then execute on end user adoption. And these are the top six that were common uh, among, again, the ones that have achieved high levels of usage and va business value within three months or 90 days. And what you can see here, essentially, activity one, five, and six, I believe, are literally about planning adoption. And today, which is just where we are and, and it reflects the diversity of our customers, one customer you would talk to would say, you know what, we actually didn't do anything when it comes to end user awareness and training and so forth. We kind of flipped the service in the back end, the user saw a little bit of a different UI, and that was that. And then we asked us a question through a help desk. What we see through research, again, at scale is customers who intently plan for end user training and awareness and actually put a good team behind it and budget and a priority do better within three months, which is essentially kind of a relatively short amount of time. The other kind of activities that you see here are things that, again, sound simple, but are not easy to achieve. For example, executive or business sponsorship. There is a big, big difference between companies we work with where the end user training and awareness is an IT-only project. And then, like one of our customers commented in the session earlier, we send emails, we do all these things, people, most of them don't, don't even read the email, to a scenario where, like in GE, for example, one of the CXO level executives champions the transformation of the company and the culture of the company. And if you, some of you have seen some of the recent ads, TV ads by GE, talking about the digital com company, that's one aspect of what they do one other aspect is Office 365 empowering this transformation, making people more productive, more innov uh, innovative, and so forth. So having someone like an executive sponsor that we're going to get back to is really, really key. So these are, and you can read through this, and, and our slides are available. Uh, but just to give you a sense of kind of what are the attributes of these customers that achieve high levels of business value with Office 365 within a short amount of time. And if you look at the bottom right there, it's a very simple graph saying, you know, if you consider each of these rows an activity, <coughs> what would be the average number of activities, which is a little bit of a semi-qualitative um, measurement, I would agree, um, that brings these customers to kind of uh, high bill of business value in a short amount of time. And you can see that the difference between low and high is not that great. I mean, literally between 1.8 on average, again, it's kind of a, a little bit of a qualitative thing, to 2.6 means the difference between investing in this to get to a high levels of usage, adoption, and business value, it's not taking on 20 different activities. It's really doing two to three things very purposefully with a good team, with focus, with executive sponsorship, with priority, monitoring, and all the things we're going to cover uh, in this session. So we want to show you one example, and we're going to try to weave in some customer stories. And this example is from Henkel, and just to give you a sense of how customers are kind of experiencing this uh, transformation. My advice to other companies would be, make it in a short time frame, just do it, make it happen. We had to simplify our environment, the users were demanding that, it was much too complex. If we had Office 2000 
and three for 10 years. And we had Lotus Notes for over 15 years. We were far away from a really modern workplace. The Office 365 solution was a perfect fit to that overall strategy of Henkel. The key of our success was to communicate to our leadership management from the beginning. They were backing us and giving us the full power and mandate to implement it. You need a strong project management capability and team resources, which we had in place. It's crucial to get it communicated and in the right way. Office Pro Plus, we rolled it out and we did the click to run implementation, the complete link rollout, SharePoint rollout, and the migration from Lotus Notes to Outlook. So we were much faster than anticipated. We thought there would be more applications where we would have issues. We had to look at 1,500 global applications and 11,000 Lotus Notes databases. We have migrated where up to 99% at the end, much higher than we expected. It was so important to have this change management program to get users on board. People realized very fast that this is a huge step for them and this is a huge improvement for their daily work. Communication is key to success. We gave them a lot of tools to get answers to quick questions. Over 100,000 e-likes were taken by the users. This was really the right strategy to get the people to the new tools. Overall, it was a very seamless process. Everything went very smooth in a very short time. Office 365 has made Henkel faster and more agile because we interact and collaborate in real time. That's a change of culture and that's very important. Office 365 simplifies my way of working each and every day. And I'm now 17 years in the industry and I've been part of a lot of projects, but seriously, this was the most successful project I've ever been in. We made the decision, which was a giant leap for Henkel, to have a modern workplace, and at the end it was very successful. Just do it, make it happen. So obviously it's not as easy as just saying make it happen. Like we said, simple but not easy. But hopefully you've heard a few things. One is executive sponsorship. You heard the VP kind of a business solutions, integrated business solutions talk about this project. Sponsorship of people like that executive is key. You heard about the importance of communication. You heard about the new role of IT. Uh, and most importantly, I think, you heard from that uh, corporate vi vice president about how this drove a change in the culture. Um, and as we roll out new technologies, and we think often, both us at Microsoft, it's part of our faults, um, and, and sometimes in IT, we think about these things in Office 365 workloads, right? We're gonna do Exchange, we're gonna roll out Yammer, we're gonna, right? But for the business users, they don't really care about the way we organize the bits, and they need to solve business tasks and address business uh, challenges. So, you know, when you think about how you roll these things out, we heard customers go from either I do it gradually, I just want to focus on exchange for now, I don't have the resources, uh, I'm going to do other things later on when we see that this is stable. More and more we're seeing customers who are realizing, you know what, this is going to be such a focus for me in the next year, budget year, fiscal year, calendar year, and so forth, that I'm going to work to enable Office 365 across the board. Yes, I can then roll it out gradually based on departments and priorities and so forth, but I want to get the technology enabled, and we're seeing good momentum with customers doing that. When you think about rolling this out, rolling by workload is one aspect, but the stages of the rollout, which is where we're going to focus more and more in the session, uh, is a little bit of a different pivot to the same process. When you talk about rolling out Office 365 and we're starting to deep dive into our methodology, we think of it in these three phases. One is Envision, which I'm gonna cover next. And Envision for us is really about helping you kind of literally envision what are the business objectives that you wanna achieve by rolling Office 365? What does it mean for a technology perspective? What are the scenarios that I'm gonna help my business users address and how I'm gonna help them address that? So it's essentially, you know, planning. Then onboarding is the more focused on the deployment, the technical work, getting the, the service enabled and so forth. And then drive value is where we actually execute our against our plan. We drive comms, we drive launch, we drive excitement with end users, we drive training, which we're gonna cover all of those. 
But we don't think of these, e even though this is kind of a little bit of a simplified graphic, we don't think of these as kind of coming in series. We think of these as phases that overlap so that when I envision, I can already start onboarding. While I onboard and do the technical work, I can definitely and should actually start planning my, my adoption activities and so forth. So when we design Fast Track, uh, and hopefully this is not the first time you're seeing this slide, um, we, de we designed our customer success service to be exactly that. It's a service that whether on the digital assets that Sharon is going to show you, or, or the Fast, Fast Track Microsoft, uh, sorry, the Fast Track managers and engineers, they would work with you not in a serial mode, but essentially you should uh, use the resources and engage our Fast Track managers to do this uh, some, somewhat in an, in an overlap ma manner. And the last thing I'm going to kind of note, in case you haven't seen this slide, is Fast Track is not only kind of this different phases overlapping, but it's also repetitive. So let's say you execute ag against this kind of framework for exchange. You can then, you know, based on your needs, if it's together in parallel or six, 12 months later, you can go back and engage with Fast Track for an exchange, um, sorry, a SharePoint online uh, project, a Skype for Business uh, project, and so forth. We mentioned, you know, kind of the, the number of customers we work with. What I would mention on this slide is essentially uh, this is global. So what happens is we work not only with customers with different sizes, from 50 seats of Office 365 all the way up to a company like GE, but we learn a lot from, again, how does this impact customers' culture? And working with customers from different regions, different languages, different local cultures tells us a lot about how do customers do this in different ways. And so when you engage um, Fast Track, for example, we try to reflect and share those learnings uh, with you as well. So now we start kind of going deeper into the different stages. And again, if you're thinking, oh, this is straightforward, that's exactly the point. Uh, simple, but not easy. So in the Envision stage, kind of three things we want you to think about and really be focused on. Identify your key stakeholders, define your vision, and plan for the rollout. So don't think, hey, I'm going to figure out the technical migration deployment aspects, and then I'm going to think about how to drive adoption. It's really, really a better practice to start early on planning for that. And then some ask us, why do you put identify stakeholders before defining my vision? Like, I want to define what I want to do, and then, and then I'm going to reach out to those people who are important for me to achieving that vision. Well, if you really want to define a vision that is non-IT centric, you have to bring in those stakeholders first. And that's a key part of what we are learning as we work with customers. The people who are going to help you not only envision the right vision for Office 365 in your organization, but are also, and Matt is going to talk about this later, they're naturally going to become your champions later on, are people mostly outside of IT. And when you talk to different IT departments, and I had spent 10 years in, in an IT organization, it's not your most natural thing in every organization to think about, hey, HR is my main contact, or marketing is my main stakeholder. Bringing those people in earlier in the planning, before you even write your vision statement, is actually a, one of the biggest things that we're seeing with successful customers. Um, so again, if it's operations, if it's legal, Obviously, IT, and sometimes, oftentimes, IT is kind of the, to use an American term, kind of quarterbacking this process. But bringing these people in will help you define a vision that is then going to resonate with the rest of the organization. And what we're seeing is, and I may repeat that later, but, you know, we, we talk to customers, and there's a very big difference. I met with a healthcare organization a couple months ago in Redmond, and I asked, I had 15 IT managers, directors, and executives in the room. And they were about to deploy Office 365. And I said, what is your vision? What happens usually is first there is silence. It's a little bit of this awkward silence. And then one brave soul kind of broke the silence and said, we really want to get bigger mail boxes for our users. And as much as uh, having been in IT, I totally understand where that person was coming from. That is not a vision for business transformation, business value and cultural change. A different healthcare organization, so the same industry, out of the UK that I worked on two years ago, 
their vision was, we're going to use SharePoint Online to help us save lives, which sounds very bombastic, I know. But that uh, heart uh, surgeon was actually with me on stage in a conference talking about how do they help use SharePoint Online to deploy a solution that does shift management. So a shift of nurses and doctors exit, and a new shift comes in. And using SharePoint Online as a platform to share uh, patient information actually helped them reduce patient error uh, and patient care error and reduce the number of wrong medicine being given to a patient or just misinformation and literally being able to quali quantify this in lives. So this is one extreme example, and this is the other extreme, and most of us are somewhere in the middle. But what I encourage you is to really think about what is the business goal uh, for, for you doing this uh, great investment. One of the things you know, beyond departments to think about is what type of people you want to bring into the process. Executive sponsor we talked about. Champions, Matt is going to cover later. One group that is not talked about that much, but we find in research repeatedly that they are very effective, are what we kind of call shepherds. And shepherds are people, sometimes in IT, as you can see at the bottom of the slide, actually mostly in IT. But it, these are people that kind of herd the cats. They bring the village along. They make the connections happen. Um, and these are people that, again, sometimes because we don't think about our organization that way on a daily basis, we have to stop and spend some time thinking about who those people are. But it's very important to bring them in to the process early on, help you, you define the vision, and then go vet it with the executive sponsor and get them to buy in and support it. So I kind of mentioned uh, this a little bit. I'm not going to drain this slide again, but I would just say I know it's hard. And sometimes, you know, we talk to IT folks who are just kind of tells you, I don't know how to do this. My manager just told me to figure this out. I don't have the buy-in. And investing time up front in getting time with that person in the executive suite that you think is going to be your champion and your sponsor is so important. Again, it could be in a 300-person company. So access to those execs is easier. And it could be somewhere in GE when you tie it to a bigger thing and you just show um, the execs of how IT is going to help that transformation happen. So you can see some content here. And again, this is uh, available to you. Um, and this is important. Complete a vision. Simple, but not easy. But there are some steps to essentially do this. And as much as this is, sounds simple, but based on research, not intuition, I can confidently say that most people don't do it. And I highly encourage you, highly, highly encourage you to take these steps and just set up a meeting. Bring the first five people you think will be relevant. You'll figure out that two are not relevant. They'll recommend someone else. It'll take you a week or two or three. It's a very, very worthwhile investment to do up front. This is the Mott McDonald vision statement that I mentioned. Remember the context. Global economic crisis, engineering company in 150 countries. And essentially, what they wanted to do is enable the engineers to access every uh, information, regardless of where they are, whether they're in the office or mobile, and be able to share information and knowledge with their engineer uh, counterparts are uh, spread around the world. So this is not about mailbox sizes. It's not about what's the largest uh, si file size that you can put and save on SharePoint or, uh, or one drive for business. Your scenarios are very, very important. And this is where you go down from your vision to what are the actual business problems that you, that you want to solve. And you can see some of the, literally, the questions that most customers that have gone through this and used our methodology um, have done. Mott McDonald, by the way, um, claim that they've taken the fast track methodology uh, from our website end-to-end, -end and just use it as is. They also have given us great feedback about it. And this is the type of uh, discussion and engagement with customers that informs uh, these questions that we share with you. We think that we have kind of roughly five to six key scenarios. And a lot of companies kind of use these as the high-level scenarios to go and say, you know what? I'm going to focus on getting it done from any, any, anywhere. Because again, mobile workforce dispersed around the world and so forth. Some people are, you know what? My first scenario is I want people to read emails on their phone. And it, again, sounds simple, but for IT, not easy. But the business value is phenomenal. So we have these. They're available on our website. Uh, as, as Sharon is going to show you, 
we have a lot of collateral and content that goes with each and every one of those scenarios so that you don't have to go and create a digital collateral. We, you can just utilize what we have and go use it within your organization. And then a fairly kind of recent addition to what we have online is what we call the productivity library. So again, when you break down that vision into actual scenarios and business problems, these become oftentimes either function specific, so something the legal department needs to go figure out versus the HR department, or there's an industry pivot. I'm a healthcare organization. My challenges are different than a manufacturing organization or a financial services organization. So the productivity library that you can find on our website has all of these Office 365 scenarios in a way that is written in end user language. And again, you have the collateral attached. So if you say, you know what, these two kind of use cases are things I want to focus on, you can go and get the collateral, use it, and you don't have to invest a lot in creating that content uh, and digitize it. I mentioned this a couple times already. Um, sounds simple, it's not easy, and most people don't yet do it. Communications, like you heard on the video from Henkel, um, have a communication strategy. Engage, if you need corporate communications with you, if you need HR with you, if you need the training uh, department within IT or outside of IT, engage them early because the amount of communication you're gonna need is significant. Engagement events, Matt is gonna talk about that later. Again, sounds simple, and you can do it in a very simple way logistically. Um, and training, that is something that I think most of you are aware of. And we're gonna show you some resources that are already available to you uh, online for you to just grab and utilize. And then I think Matt at the end is gonna go back to this topic because it's important. I don't feel strongly that this audience need uh, kind of a preaching about you know, measuring and tracking and having KPIs and metrics and power metrics and all that good stuff. I would say though, again, try to tie whatever it is that you decide to measure to that vision, to the business objective, and to the scenarios. All right, so we have our IT ops KPIs, which is good, but really think hard about what do I want to be able to, um, kind of when I join the executive meeting to report status on this project, I wanna say, hey, we enabled a thousand more mobile employees to do this for the business, right? And really have KPIs that are simple, clear, but are worded in a business orientation rather than, than just technology. And then we're not gonna, I think, uh, Sharon will correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we're gonna cover the success plan specifically in, in our demo today that we have in different sessions. We do have, if you go to our website and authenticate, there's a whole section and module that enables you to really plan your rollout. It could be by workload, it could be across workloads, it could be a deployment pro uh, project, it could be an adoption project, but we're capturing the knowledge and the feedback we're getting from other customers, and we've built this authenticated environment that is just yours. You can have your Microsoft account team be there with you collaborating on the plan. You can have your partner. If you have a partner, you're working with partners. We're seeing great results when partners are engaged. Um, and you can have one central place that is tied to the fast track process with the resources and everything else uh, for you to use uh, in, in the planning phase. And I think with that, I'll hand it over to Sharon, and she's gonna walk you through the fast track website specifically for, for Envision. Right. Thank you, Gideon. That was really awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the digital experience through Envision. And if you guys like, let me know if you wanna see the success plan, because we could go ahead and dovetail into that as well, because they sort of play together really nicely. All right, let me know when you could see my screen. Here we go. So this is our Office uh, 365 Fast Track site. And what we're gonna do is navigate straight into Envision. In Envision, as I open that up, you will see that it is comprised of three elements. We have here define vision, identify scenarios, and create a plan. What I'm gonna show you is, is as you navigate to the bottom part of define vision, I'm gonna go ahead and open up engage executive sponsor template. As Gideon mentioned before, this is super critical, right? Because you wanna be able to identify and engage your executive sponsors by asking questions such as, why are executives important to Office 365 success? Um, how can executives drive Office 365 success? 
how can executive use Office 365 capabilities themselves? Now, as you can see here, there's a lot more than that, but it's super critical in order to set your uh, success plan right to bring in the executive sponsor. Now, defining a vision, having a crisp, concise, comprehensive vision is what sets the foundation for your success plan. After that, let's go into identify scenarios. As Gideon has pointed out, scenario is playing a central role to the creation of our success plan. And if you want, we can go into that a little bit. But right here, what we have here is a series of core scenarios. And with each core scenario, scenarios, as I navigate through them, you could see that the unique relative video tutorials light up beneath that, as well as the benefits for you and the benefits for your organization. Now, an area I'd like to draw your attention to is the productivity library. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand that. As I open up the productivity library, something I'd like to show you is the library um, enables you to focus on, uh, say, the problem you want to solve or the goal that you want to achieve, you know, rather than applications to features and functions. So what we see on the right-hand side are use cases. And on the left-hand side, by tagging, we see roles, industry, and products. I'm going to go ahead and say click on a filter sales and I'm interested in the use case, be productive on the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that, and I'll see for this use case, I have uh, four suggested get started activities. I'm gonna go ahead and open up these activities, and I could, as I can see there, um, there are associated trainings, as well as case studies to help me along this journey. So I'm gonna go back to completing the Envision phase. We went through defining the vision, identifying the scenarios, and prioritizing it. Now it's all about creating the plan. When I navigate to create a plan, you could see that there are resources that will follow along the journey. And in this section, you'll see we have communication guides and how to build the champion program that Matt's gonna talk to a little later. But what's really important here is it helps you save time and to increase the quality of your success plan. Now, would you like me to go into the success plan just a little bit? Let's just touch on it, because it's kind of cool. I've already uh, preset and signed in myself, right, into the dashboard. And you could see here a series of success plan already underway. You may certainly create a success plan as well. But in this scenario, let's go ahead and open up Office 365 deployment. In the success plan, you see three sections, business case, service readiness, adoption. You also have a fourth one that you may activate called onboarding. Before this activity, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that and just focus on these three. Something I'd like to bring your attention to with regards to the business case is all the activity that Gideon mentioned earlier, well, it's dynamic and it's integrated and it's pulled right into the success plan. Things in the business case, for instance, is where we capture your vision, for instance. We identify and prioritize your scenario, as well as bring in the collaborative team together, because it's about assembling this team beyond your organization, meaning your partners, as well as your Microsoft associates, because this is a collaborative journey that we're all on together. So let's go ahead and open this up and sort of show you some of the elements here. As you can see, I've already gotten started, and when I first went in, I selected the scenario that made sense for my business, and that is conduct business from anywhere, anytime, to get work done. I've also identified the problem and how I'm going to go about solving that. After that, it will lead me to the next tab, which is capabilities. The beauty of this here is based on the scenario that I selected in business scenarios, capability automatically associates the product to the scenario, I may also add additional products if I so desire, but for this case, let's just continue to move on so I can show you how this works together. Now this area should look super familiar to you as we've uh, just covered it earlier in the productivity library. These are use cases pulled directly from the productivity library. And what's more important, it is mapped directly to the business case that you identified earlier. And you may certainly expand on these to learn a little bit more. If you click on learn more, it'll take you to the productivity library. And if this makes sense to me um, for my business, I could go ahead and add that to my plan, bam. And then without going into more detail, the remaining uh, tabs will cover teams, benefits, timelines, as well as risks. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the summary. 
So the service readiness, I'm just going to lean over that really quickly. As you know, it asks questions with regards to your current environment and your cloud uh, strategies. So let's go ahead and move forward to adoption, because I think that's what we're all here for, right? So let's go ahead and open up adoption. Adoption is comprised of three sections. Now, the very first section asks you um, to identify your team, uh, what, are, what is the media that you plan to use, as well as the training. Now, the second section is broken into a list of checklists. Don't let this overwhelm you. This checklist is broken down to pre-launch and launch, pre-launch, launch, and post-launch activities. All this description that you see here is supposed to make your life a heck of a lot easier, as it is best practices culminated from you, the customers, our partners, and our Microsoft field experts. So then, Let's go ahead and navigate down to the bottom. Oh, I do want to uh, capture this thing, is that you may, from the baseline of the best practices, customize this to make it fit for what it is that your business needs. Now, the third section of this is resources. And you see here the scenario that is automatically populated? Well, it's pulled right from the beginning of the business case. So uh, in, earlier on, that was a scenario and capabilities that we selected. And sure enough, it shows up here along with all the resources in a zip folder that has email templates, getting started guides, and much, much more. With that, I'm going to go back to the success plan. And that was it. I'm going to hand this over to Matt. All right, so as you already know, I'm not Matt, but I'm going to say Ooh, I'm sorry. one more thing. No, it's OK. We just decided to improvise a little bit. So before I invite my, Matt on stage, uh, we are going to kind of do a little bit of more content, and hopefully you're seeing kind of there's a lot more available that can help you through this process. You don't have to figure this all out. But one of the things we talked about was getting an executive sponsor, and it's something we see that many struggle with. If there's someone in the audience that in a few minutes uh, would be willing to stand by the mic and just share kind of a quick story on how they got their executive to sponsor this project, it would be phenomenal. And we also have kind of a cool uh, giveaway for that per brave person. So with that, I'll hand it over to Matt. All right. Thanks, Gideon. And good afternoon, everybody. So just quick show of hands to wake you up out of the post-lunch stupor. How many of you have not yet started your journey with Office 365? Raise your hands high. Just curious. How haven't started yet? Great. How many of you are in the middle of deploying Office 365 in some form or another? OK. A little bit more. And how many of you are already done or really in that stage? You've already deployed it now or looking at, hey, how do we get more value out of this? How do we continue to enhance it? Okay, excellent. About a, almost a third of you. Great. So, um, so what I want to talk about real briefly, and I'm going to fly through some content. So this is going to go quick. Um, expect to kind of be about drinking from the fire hose um, here. And the point here is to really help you understand uh, that as Gideon talked about, the as you move into a service-oriented environment, your role shifts from being just the uh, deploying the service and providing the capabilities to your, to your users to really focusing on how to help them deal with the change and get the most value from the service. So we talked about onboarding. There's lots of sessions on the technical deployment part and how Fast Track can help. But we're going to dive into this drive value component. And I really just want to draw your attention to the last bit, which is this measure, success, learn, and iterate. You know, Gideon talked at the very beginning that this is a circular and iterative process. The goal here is not that you're going to do a project from beginning to end. You launch it, and then you say, great, we're done. We're going to move on. In the customer panel, they talked about Bob Davis, uh, our vice president in, in office engineering, talked about how our customers in the old days would take their best team. They would align them to this Office 365 deployment or Office upgrade. And then when it was done, move them on to the next project. And it's really tempting to take your best people and then move them on to something else. But what we're seeing more and more is organizations taking that core team, recognizing the new environment that we're in, the constant updates that are coming, and allowing that team to stay focused on continuing to drive value and get more adoption and business value from the users. So let's take a minute to talk about champions. Champions are those people who are really passionate technology users. There's those in the organization who care about helping the organization and helping one another. And so why are they important? Well, they're important because the, they're, 
most people, the most common way of learning is from their peers. So this is some research that we did um, around SharePoint end user adoption. But what it really shows, if you'll see in the upper right there, is how people uh, choose to learn and learn best and said it was most helpful. And that was their coworker. So non-manager, non-IT, somebody who came to their desk or answered their question or they reached out to. And what we see being really effective is building a champion's community. So this champion's community, uh, there's a lot of great ways in building this. You might say, well, how do I identify these people? How do I, how do I know who's a good champion? Well, first, well, I'll tell you it doesn't work is people who are voluntold to do it. Right? Those people who say, hey, you're going to be a champion, and I need you to do this. Right? It's those people, what we see is that you can actually, uh, uh, Mott McDonald that Gideon talked about earlier, they created a job description, if you will. They said, hey, here's what we want our champions to do. This is what it means to be a champion and to kind of help be uh, one of these uh, people who can really help be a business enabler. And then they asked for volunteers. And they used their Yammer community. Uh, and they used referrals from other people. A lot of these people are people you already know. They're the people who are just naturally helpful to other users that are, are willing to step up and learn new things to be your early adopters. But it's really this network throughout your organization um, that can really help drive value and also help you understand where is the value uh, being created. So a great example, um, we, we oftentimes uh, talk about in the world of adoption the concept of green dots, yellow dots, and red dots. Okay? Green dots are your champions. They're the people who get it. They're the people who want to change, the people who want to use the latest and greatest. Those yellow dots are the people who kind of are in the middle. They're kind of the, the folks who are a little skeptical, maybe aren't clear about the value. They're kind of like, like their old way of working. And then you got the red dots, the resistors, the people who just say, ah, oh, I liked it the way it was. Why are you changing? Who moved my cheese? Right? And the goal here, in your champions, is to identify those green dots and focus on the yellow. Too often, we start to focus on the red and waste a lot of time and energy trying to drag the resistors forward. Well, what will happen is by building this community of champions, you're going to start building the success stories. You're going to start identifying places in the business where value is being created. So these become your, your hands and feet, your eyes and ears out there, not just, kind of, not just actually making and creating the value, but also being the feedback loop that we're going to talk about um, uh, in a little bit. So, as you have your champions, Gideon talked about really the importance of planning your awareness. And so all I'm going to do is draw your attention here to the tailoring your language and targeting your audience. Think about any product launch externally and the marketing and communications that go into that, um, whether that's the omni-channel kind of uh, social media, the use of print advertising, the use of PR, of all of the different ways that when you launch a product to the public, that, that uh, companies are using to really drive awareness and drive brand affinity and drive uh, a positive uh, feeling towards the product. And, and begin to think about your own launches in that way. If we were launching this product to the market, your market being your internal users, what would you do? And we're going to talk about some really great ideas that other companies have done, but tailoring that to, uh, to your organization. So let's actually take a look at a video that Mott McDonald used in launching Office 365. So this was how do we market internally? How do we raise awareness of what Office 365 is? You know, I think a lot of users say, oh, Office 365, I know what that is. Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, I've used that for years. Like, oh, another Office upgrade. You know, great. No, it's a completely new way of working. There's so many different capabilities and opportunities to actually make them more productive, help them get their job done faster, help them to go spend time with their families. Help them to spend less time doing monotonous things, right? How do you translate this into the things that they care about, right? Whether it's sales reaching, you know, uh, closing more deals, whether it's your marketing department being able to collaborate better and hear from your customers, or whether it's your R&D department being able to better connect with one another. Think about what do they care about. Spend some time doing some interviews and really understanding and being empathetic to their needs. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the Mott McDonald story. Technology is advancing at a remarkable pace. We're embracing the changes and transforming the way we work. We're going digital and improving our systems to stay ahead of the competition. Office 365 gives you your digital workplace with more powerful tools, access from anywhere and easier ways to share. So you can spend more time with your team, your practice 
and your customers. We know you sometimes need to work when you're out of the office. Now you can get to your own documents and files on any device with OneDrive. Share files with colleagues and manage permissions so only the right people see them. When you need a central hub for documents and information, team sites are the answer. They also give you the tools you need to coordinate a project, all in one place. You can even collaborate with customers and partners, sharing only the information you choose. With pressing deadlines, you often need to work with colleagues in different offices and countries. Collaborating on documents is simple, no matter where you are. With online office apps, you can work on the same document simultaneously, right there in your browser. Because you can take your digital workplace with you, you can continue to contribute and see updates. Information is valuable. With mobility, we all have increased responsibility for protecting it. Office 365 helps with security settings and device management. Customers choose us for the quality of our people. Through practice communities, we supplement local know-how with global capability. Delve lets you access this talent, showcase your own expertise, and see what's going on in your network. Then you can talk on Yammer, sharing and learning to develop innovative solutions for our customers. When you get together in meetings and calls, make them most of the time, capture ideas quickly, and organize your work with OneNote. Create meeting notes together and assign actions with a simple click. In our competitive markets, we need to impress. Now you can create compelling visual presentations online. Text, photos and videos transfer seamlessly from any office application to Sway and look great on any screen. Office 365 will continue to evolve as we introduce new features to your digital workplace so you'll always have the latest tools to succeed. You'll have the freedom to contribute to our global knowledge network and work more closely with partners so customers can benefit from our renowned professional excellence. Going digital will help us to use our ingenuity to create lasting value for all. Office 365, your digital workplace. Communicate, collaborate and get more done. So what a great example of starting to bring together not just the experiences that they're used to, but also uh, new experiences like Delve and OneNote. So in addition to Delve, OneNote, other experiences that people might not have, have uh, known about, really they started and tied it back to that vision, working anytime, anywhere to better serve their customers. Right? Everybody in the company understands that Office 365 is not technology for technology's sake, but that it ties back to their business strategy. So let's go ahead and talk quickly about some launch and engagement events. These are really uh, some really incredible ideas shared in our customer community. If you haven't joined, I really encourage you to go to techcommunity.microsoft.com. You can there connect with people in this room, with others who have been at this conference and around the world. So customers who are sharing their stories and their examples. So, Launch and engagement events are a great way to kind of go beyond just the emails and the videos and kind of the digital to provide a real life uh, experience where people can come and they can ask questions. So what we've seen be really successful is these some large scale launch events where you can do a company all hands or town hall. Using Skype meeting broadcast with Yammer built in right there, you now have the ability for people who aren't there in person to actually feel like they're there with the video, but then also to engage in a discussion and conversation about what's happening in real time. We also see uh, using a, a Yammer group and pointing users there to, during the events and to get more information, especially those champions, is another great way to use Office 365 to, to launch and get more adoption of Office 365. Small things, believe it or not, and I'm sure you've seen it here down in the expo hall, t-shirts, pens, pencils, stickers, right? Those are great to give away, and they're really, uh, you know, small things. Ask your users to, to sign up or to make a post or to ask a question or to tell you and give you some feedback and collect that back uh, in order to get some of these things. A small amount of budget for some swag can really go a long way in creating buzz and excitement. Um, and then displaying printed materials. Don't think all digital, right? Posters in the break room. Uh, I saw one company put them up in the elevators. Um, you know, so just putting those everywhere to, again, kind of create that buzz and give people a feeling that, hey, something's going on. 
Great example uh, that we can, you can look up online more about is Nationwide. You probably heard about them um, and their uh, really incredible launch. They decided to use their all company meeting as an opportunity to talk about uh, the new innovation and new capabilities that Office 365 would deliver. All right, let's talk real quickly about end user training. The points here that are really important is don't focus on the how. Users can find, they can use Google or Bing to search on the web and find videos and things like that that they need on, hey, how do I create a pivot table? The key for driving adoption is why. Why do I want to use Delve? What is in it for me? So a key part of that training is really de demonstrating a day in the life. The most effective training uh, campaigns I've seen combine both uh, video, using Office 365 video uh, is a great place to host all of that, put it all up in, in learning channels. They leverage the materials that we have, which we're about to talk about uh, more, but they also do targeted training. So they partner with learning and development or partner with a partner who provides this training to say, hey, let's train all of our folks or executive admins, uh, our power users on some of the great features uh, of the new Outlook 2016. Let's go and talk to uh, uh, the folks in internal communications on how they can use SharePoint and Yammer. What does that mean for them? So it's really about understanding what your audience, right back to what we talked about with communications, the same thing goes uh, with training. So down at the bottom, lead with the benefits, focus on the real work scenarios, and then again, mobilize your champions, your eyes and ears. What's working and what's not throughout the bit. We're really excited today. Uh, you hopefully saw a blog post in the last few days about a partnership that was already underway um, with LinkedIn. And they are actually uh, LinkedIn Learning, formerly lynda.com, uh, has an incredible amount of excellent content uh, around Office. And so we just launched, if you go to our Office Training Center, uh, the link here on the left, you can see it in, on, in the right square, um, is that we're actually going to be uh, partnering with them to provide their LinkedIn Learning training content uh, there through the Office Training Center. So we were already building out an excellent library, both product and scenario based. Now you can go to this website, you'll see you can actually get a free month of full access, but we're also uh, bringing some of their content into our training center. Uh, and I'm sure you'll see more of that to come uh, as the acquisition closes. So great content here. Make sure you go and check this out. Uh, excellent point to uh, start. So. So we're going to, you know, hopefully you're seeing this, you've seen from Sharon uh, some of this, the resources around uh, creating your vision um, and now getting into driving value. We've really provided a whole bunch of resources and content. I know I've talked about, hey, have awareness, focus on end user training, talk about your champions. And these are all the different kind of resources we provide. Posters and flyers. You don't need to create these on your own. We have templates. Countdown and announcement emails. Take the templates we provide you, customize them. Partner with your internal communications group or HR to how you're going to really make those resonate. Um, we have a tips and tricks email series. So even after the launch, you're continuing to send, hey, did you know you could do this? Hey, did you know about that? Really keeping users aware of the value they can be getting. Um, the training center, which I just talked about, um, and then highlights and video teasers. So we have videos. You don't need to be a large company with a budget like Mont McDonald to create your own. Don't feel like that's the, the bar to be reached in order to drive this. We have videos that explain Office 365. Use those. Use all of our content to really get you, you know, for many of you, we'll get you all the way there. You know, just out of the box, take it and use it. For others, you might take it and then say, hey, here's how we're going to tweak this to make this resonate in our organization. So I'm going to turn it back to Gideon. We'd love to hear your stories, as he mentioned uh, a second ago, and we have some pretty great swag uh, to give away. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um, any brave souls out there, someone who's willing to share kind of a, there you go, sir. There's a mic there and a mic right there. Right there? Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. So if, if you remember, the question was about how did you get your executive sponsor to support your Office 365 project? Uh, yes, so um, actually I uh, can tell you about two organizations. One, um, okay. the, the bad story, one, the good story. <laughs> good. Um, we so learned as much on the bad. The, the first one, uh, the previous organization I was with, uh, the 365 uh, transition was more of an IT driven activity uh, without any executive sponsors. And no vision. It was all about, as you said you know larger mailbox and you know cloud and it 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 was an issue yeah. <laughs> it ended up being a challenge um and, and the current company i'm with 
uh, it's a large uh, biotech pharma, and our CIO was engaged from the beginning. Uh, and the way we approached it, uh, in the earlier stage of the project, we were having a weekly um, executive sponsorship uh, steering uh, meeting where we would talk about uh, the vision, uh, the path forward, uh, and then it ended up being uh, CIO plus one. So CIOs and VPs nice. of, of various divisions uh, included so that it's not only CIO, but his directs uh, also uh, communicating the same message. And then those meetings uh, initially were weekly, then it, as projects started to move forward, it became every two weeks. And then finally, it ended up being a monthly uh, steering meeting where when, once we were well on our way to migration and transition, uh, it was more of a touch point. And what are the issues are you facing? What can I do to help you guys? Uh, that's where we ended up uh, with, with our CIO. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And we have some cool Bose headphones for you. Uh, if I could ask you one quick follow-up question. Um, OK, you're already on your way to your seat. That's fine. <laughs> He's excited about the, the headphones, so we'll just kind of go. But uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I don't know what the company name is, but it sounds like you know, sometimes the CIO is that person in the executive suite that we as IT kind of have access to. And obviously, kind of utilizing that relationship in the, your management chain to then broaden the support within the executive suite is highly, highly important. We're going to skip a, a few slides that we feel kind of we, we covered. Um, we want to talk more about kind of measuring success. Matt uh, talked about an important point really briefly that is showcasing success. So you're starting to get your champions. You're starting to get the first story out. Don't avoid telling the story about your success. And sometimes it's as simple as finding out who is the executive admin who was able to do something different with Office 365 and making them a hero. And you would do great just by putting a spotlight on your green dots, as Matt defined them, and really creating kind of a vibe and, and a whole conversation around what each individual person does with, with Office 365, and, and we see that. And then for you, from a monitoring standpoint, we just have it here because it's a, it's a tool for you to monitor this process specifically. If you are not aware, today in the admin center, you can actually show use, uh, you can view usage reports by workload and monitor you know, what is going on in your environment and see kind of what's being used versus uh, what isn't. So to summarize before we open up to more questions, and again, there are mics on both sides of the room, um, what we hope to deliver today was essentially a sense that when you think about these types of aspects of our Office 365 rollout, it really sounds simple. Yeah, executive sponsor, of course I get that. Oh, a champion community, of course I get that. Simple, but not easy. Take these steps seriously and invest time up front in planning and getting the buy-in. Second message that we hope to deliver today is there is a lot out there from a resource perspective that we try to, again, distill learnings from thousands and thousands of customers. Ask ourselves, what did they do to make themselves successful, and how can we package it for other customers? Um, there's a lot more on the website that we, haven't, uh, we didn't have time today to cover, but literally down to the flyer you can hand out to people and the poster you can hang up in the cafeteria to the emails, to the comms, to the videos, to the training content. Everything is available. So while sometimes it looks daunting, it's actually simpler. And our Fast Track team will be ha happy to help you with the adoption related aspects of this. People get to know Fast Track and more and more customers know about it, which is great. But oftentimes customers think about it as a deployment thing. It's not. It's a customer success service. So if you're thinking about how do you help end users, your Fast Track manager should be able to walk you through the resources, think together with you about your scenario, and kind of think about your, your uh, rollout plan. So please keep that in mind. There's a Fast Track roadmap slide. Bob Davis mentioned this a couple of times in previous uh, scenarios and sessions. Don't forget, it's a service. And by a service means that it evolves. We continue to add capabilities. We announce those as part of the Office 365 roadmap because we treat it 100% as a service. We have a note-taking service in OneNote, and we have a customer success service in FastTrack. And that's exactly how we, we manage it. And having a, ro a clear roadmap for you uh, is part of the deal. So with that, we do have, I believe, a few more questions. This timer here doesn't really work. So um, if you have questions, we're more than happy to take them. 
Wow. Yeah. Hi, I know we are in America, but uh, is it going to be available in other, in other languages? Yes. Uh, yes? So, oh, yes, nice. absolutely. So today we're localized in how many languages, Sharon? You can whisper in my ear. Uh, So 21 languages oh, this, today, expanding really to nice. 27. Yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. so Sharon owns our website, and she's doing an amazing job making sure that we push localization because we totally realize it. Uh, you can hear from my accent that I'm not from here as well. So we were a very international team in nature, and, and we push ourselves really hard on localization for sure. Maybe one question for myself then. Is it in Dutch? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Whew. You want to? Here, that was a, Make my day. a good question, and we had the easy answer, so that was good. <laughs> All right, any more questions we can answer? Anything around end user adoption? Go ahead, sir. It's more a comment for everybody else in the room that Matt awesome. made, really, good. is um, don't try to boil the ocean with Office 365. There's literally an unlimited amount of things that you can do with it. Um, what you'll want to try to do is connect to an emotional you know, create that emotional connection with your users, right? When you're talking to someone, don't tell them all the features. Ask them what their business problem is, and then show them how Office 365 can solve it. That you'll get your best response for, and then they'll champion for you for the rest of, your, of their lives using Office 365. That's great. Can I just ask you what industry you're from? Um, I work at a, uh, a beer company, um, nice. and, and we've been using Yammer for, I think, a little while. I'll just let you know that David Sachs signed our agreement, so we've been doing oh. this a long, long, long time. So there's a Yammer connection as well. Yeah, yeah. But now I know how you're making users happy. That's well, good. Yeah. The beer doesn't know. We just get people drunk and they use it. Uh, <laughs> that's the biggest tip of the day. Yes, sir, go ahead. And so uh, this is by way of a shameless plug. So to um, dovetail off of this great session, I'm doing a session. I'm Eric Spence, and I'm doing a session tomorrow on, on how to drive value in Office 365. Uh, leveraging a lot of these, but there will be some other, um, some other things I want to I wanna share with you. So, so if you like this one, come to that one, because that will build on a lot of what you just heard today. So thanks. Great. I love Shameless. And then I'll, I'll just mention in the same vein, uh, there are customer sessions. Again, we really ask our customers to come here and share this unfiltered. There's a Mott McDonald session, because we mentioned that, so you can go deep with them and their team and ask them everything, and the Carlsberg team is here, and they're going to share their uh, story in a, in a session. Yes, uh, sorry. Let's go I, that way. I have a question on uh, improving yeah. user experience, J keeping in mind that the enterprises these days are not just Microsoft-centric, but also Ma Apple devices, iPhones, et cetera. And limitations, basic limitations, like not being able to edit your Yammer post, having um, OneDrive for business, not you working with SharePoint, uh, cannot open Excel files larger than 10 meg on Excel online. All these have a user experience impact. Absolutely. How can we communicate that things are changing, maybe one year from now, or, and at the same yes. time trying to deliver value to users? Absolutely. And you specifically are thinking about user experiences on different platforms other than Windows, for example, iOS, Android. Across the board. Yes, absolutely. Totally fair point. And um, as you probably kind of saw from the session, we we're here focusing more on kind of what do we do outside of the product. Obviously, we make f great investments in kind of trying to unblock these things and improve the user experience. So to your question, if you're working with Fast Track, your Fast Track manager and Fast Track engineer should be your first point of contact. You should tell them, hey, I'm, you know, I meet with customers and say, you know what? I need you to get the Skype for Business app on iOS better because our workers use iPads. So this is feedback that we're looking for. We do a lot of proactive research to understand ourselves where the friction is, but that's totally another aspect of end user adoption that we invest in. So in any way, shape, or form, if you want to, after the session, come talk to us or with Fast Track managers, share the feedback. And, and I just want to add two quick things. One is, right, it, just to the point that was made over here, asking the users what they're trying to achieve and helping figure that out while we're communicating back to us those blockers that you just had on a technical side. You know, hopefully you're in the Yammer roadmap session, edit post is coming. A lot of these other things that you've mentioned are things that we hear. Keep the feedback coming. We're constantly gathering that data and we're going to continue to try and enhance those from both a technical perspective, but also it's all of our jobs in the room to say, hey, despite this, how can we improve or deliver on the outcome that they want and things like that. There's always going to be those things, but great points. Oh, would you also yeah. say that we should let our users also be the voice to send you feedback directly through user sure. voice and other? Sure, yes. absolutely. More, the more votes and data that we collect, the better. Absolutely. Yes. Thank Thanks. you. Go ahead, sir. 
My point goes uh, kind of to what he was saying. You know, when you took your poll in the beginning, about a third of us are already on Office 365. Um, we were somewhat early adopters. We did uh, Q1, Q2 of 2013 um, and moved from Exchange 2010 to Office 365. The main thing driving that, as you said, was mailbox size, right? So ours was more IT driven in the beginning, um, but with the new services that we've seen since we've been here, would it be appropriate for us to reach out to Fast Track in order to kind of re-implement, you, you know, if you will, to our users and say, because you, know, you guys know as well as I do, and he pointed out a couple of the issues, OneDrive, not good in the beginning. You know, now with the new OneDrive Sync client, way better, right? So you guys are getting definitely making improvements on the products. That's just one in particular that you've made improvements on. So would it be appropriate for us to reach out to Fast Track in order to kind of re-implement the technology in our environment? And we're about 1,300 users in a yeah. The answer is program. yes, 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 and yes. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. To be clear, anybody with over 50 seats can reach out to Fast Track at any time, whether that's tomorrow, in one month, in one year, at any point in time on any part of the service to get help and assistance, whether it's deployment or just adoption. So, uh, and like absolutely. we said to your point, it's rep yes, adoption planning, we provide what we call success workshops. They'll walk you through this methodology again. They'll talk to you about scenarios. They'll do all this work. And like we said, it's repetitive. So you could do it for Exchange Online, and then you can come back and do it for Skype for Business, or you can do a scenario that is multi-workload, because again, business users don't care about workloads. I, I don't know if you guys mentioned it, but on the Fast Track site, there's a, a, a launch, um, capability launch there, <coughs> So, so what, what Miguel's pointing out, just so those in the room can't hear, basically saying that there should be people in your organization who are constantly looking at the updates that are coming and then thinking about, hey, there's new capabilities that just got delivered in the last 60, 90 days. How are we going to do that? How are we going to use it? And if, you need, if you'd like Fast Track guidance or help, reach out to Fast Track. We're happy to do that. Are, but are you guys consolidating that information? What we're having a problem with is we have multiple rollouts globally. Um, so the, the localization is great. We, we love that. But if someone says, hey, I just got an iPad Pro, how is OneDrive going to work on that? Mm -hmm. We have to then somehow, and we don't because we don't have the resources to do it, we have to somehow steer them to a self-study kind of program uh, or, or you know, direct them to a Yammer group that, you know, do you guys have a resource? Is there, is there a plan to have a resource so that as the roadmap rolls things out and things get baked, that that gets updated, or is that something that we, sh you know, we need to try to do? Yeah, I think it's it's a fair point and an important point. One is, as much as you know, we, we ask you guys to think about our roadmap and be aware. The the frequency of updates of the service is is kind of challenging for us as well to go and <laughs> every time. I mean, I think it's 30 updates a month to update content and package it. To your point, is a little bit almost impossible. Uh, so what we have is we have the scenarios, we update those. We have the training content that Matt mentioned now with, with across Office and LinkedIn. And that's going to be kind of the two-minute video that shows you how to do something on an iPad. That's where we're going to be more kind of high frequency on updating so, the content. So that's where I would look to. So we're at time. If you guys with questions want to come back up, uh, come on up, and we'll be happy to answer those and stuff like that. We're going to get ready for the next session and stuff like that. Thank you, everyone, You can also for ask joining. Chris all the questions. He'll answer them as well. So. Thank you.